Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm here just outside my back door today. And I've been out of the country in Switzerland, and you'll see some of my Swiss episodes on my playlist. And I got back six weeks later to find three large aerial yellow jacket nests around my house just outside my door. One is back here, right here on this fence. Another one is under the deck just above me here. And there's a third nest that built it in our uh, picnic table umbrella just outside my, my door on the other side of the house. So this episode is going to be to answer a lot of questions you might have about yellow jackets and how some species build their nests above the ground not below the ground. Most of the yellow jacket nests I've seen have been below ground. And in this area here, we seem to have a lot of aerial yellow jackets. So stay tuned for this episode on yellow jackets. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. If you've watched some of my episodes at Nature at Your Door, you know that occasionally I delve into some risky areas. I'm not reckless, but I do take some risks and I try to mitigate those. So today I took a little bit of risk trying to film up close these yellow jackets and observe some of the things they're doing. What I did was I put a tripod out in front of one of the nests and I left it there and then I'd move it up slowly, walk away, move it up slowly, walk away, until I finally got the, them habituated to the tripod. Then I came back, put my camera on, <laughs> click the uh, start button, and rolled this film. So it was fascinating watching these uh, yellow jackets up close and watching their behavior and the things they're doing around the nest in a way that normally you couldn't because you could never get this close to these yellow jackets. These yellow jackets are very aggressive, and if you get too close to them or disturb their nests, they will come out in mass. There's a pheromone released along with the venom in their stingers that alerts the whole hive to danger. There are 18 species of yellow jackets in North America. Some are ground nesters, some are aerial nesters, and these are the classic common aerial nesting yellow jackets. They're actually in the same genus as the bald face hornet. So these yellow jackets have the typical black and yellow marking, while the bald face hornet, which they make very, very similar nests to each other, have black stouter bodies and a white face, giving them the name the bald face hornet. So these nests, when they're found late in the fall after the leaves fall off, may be a bald-faced hornet nest or it could be an aerial, aerial yellow jacket nest. The life cycle of the yellow jacket is that only the queens will overwinter and they will find a place to get down under leaf litter or under logs or in trees to get below the freeze line. These queens will emerge in the spring and start to build a small paper nest where they'll lay a couple eggs. These eggs will mature and form workers. Most of the workers that do most of this work in building the nest and coordinating the hive are actually females. And it's only the females that can deliver that really powerful pack-a-punch sting. Though some males seem to use one of their genital organs and some species of wasps to do a similar prick and a kind of a sting but it's the females. And the reason it's the females that can sting is the stinger is actually a modified ovipositor or egg laying device. So in these sterile worker females, they have this ovipositor, but it's adapted to injecting venom. And again, I have to say that these wasps can be very aggressive. And if they feel their nest is threatened or if you've come too close or you physically deserve the nest, they will come out in mass, they will chase you down, and they will sting you. And the difference between a wasp and a bee is that a wasp can sting you repeatedly. They can put that stinger out and use it over and over again to cause a lot of damage. 
since I brought up the word bee, <laughs> I do want to make a distinction here between wasps and bees, because these words seem to be used interchangeably by the public. A bee is a different species of animal. They're in a different uh, family, the apidae, and they tend to have stouter bodies, uh, hairy bodies. They collect pollen for their protein, and of course nectar for sugar for energy and they tend to have more compact bodies. Wasps, on the other hand, are longer, have a very small, sometimes thread waist, very tight waist. They lack hair. They're shiny and smooth and black, or often black and yellow and, and smooth, shiny colors. Wasps are also predators. During most of the year, Wasps will feed on caterpillars, crickets, grasshoppers, aphids, any other kind of insect. So for this, wasps are known as beneficial insects. And I don't really like using the term beneficial to mean an insect that is placing some human value over one species or over other, and I don't really like that. But in terms of beneficial, what does that mean? It's a human category that says these wasps would provide us humans with some kind of benefit. And that benefit is that they eat lots of harmful insects. Of course, they eat all kinds of insects, but they might eat a lot of insects that are eating your garden. In fact, a single wasp's nest may eat up to a pound of insects in your area. So the main thing here really is that wasps and yellow jackets have an important place in the ecology. To have a balanced ecology, you need all types of organisms that have naturally evolved in your area. So you might ask, why are wasps all around my picnic table in the fall, particularly when we have soft drinks out or fruit? Well, wasps change from a heavily protein diet to a sugar diet in the fall. And that's the reason for that is during the year, they have to gather protein to feed the larval grubs inside the wasp's nest. And by fall, that production stops. So they only need sugar for energy. They no longer need that protein. So as I've been talking, I know you've been watching the behavior of these wasps. You can see that on the outside of the nest, you probably saw many wasps that were actually building the nest larger. They were creating more paper. And they create that paper by scraping off wood from trees and fences and uh, dead trees and chewing it up and then regurgitating it with water to make this paper pulp. You may have also seen wasps guarding the entrance. You may also have seen wasps that were staying at the entrance and vibrating their wings to create air current when it got very, very hot. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. If you have any questions about wasps, yellow jackets, or any other things, please leave me a comment. And remember, if you like what I do, please leave me a like and subscribe to my channel. I cover all things nature, frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.